Hello and welcome to Redstone in 10 Minutes, my starter guide to Redstone in Minecraft. Redstone is an ore that can be found in the bottom 16 levels of Minecraft, commonly near lava or bedrock. And when mined with an iron pick or better, the ore drops multiple bits of redstone dust. And this redstone dust can be placed by right clicking and is the main component in creating any redstone circuit. A redstone circuit consists of three parts, the input, the circuitry and the output. Let's start for the inputs. The input is what you use to activate the current in the redstone circuit, so in fact it is what you use to power your output. The first input is a redstone torch, it is created by combining a stick with redstone dust. It creates a constant source of power and is useful if you want your output to be permanently on. The second output is a pressure plate. It can be either wood or stone. It's created by placing two of the respective blocks side by side. Each produces power when a player or mob stands on it. The wooden pressure plate also produces power when an item is dropped on it, although the stone does not. And this is useful for creating traps or automated doors. Next is the lever, created by combining a stick and cobblestone. The lever can be toggled by right clicking, changing the power from off to on. This is useful when you want to control what your creation is doing. The fourth input is a button, created with two pieces of stone. When pressed it creates power but only for a short amount of time, so it's useful for when you only want your creation to work for a second. The final input is relatively new in the game, the tripwire. It's created by combining wood, a stick and iron. This gives you two hooks which you can place on opposite walls. Then join together with string by right clicking the same way as you would to place redstone dust. Then when the string is walked through it will give out power. And this is very useful for traps due to its discrete nature. And that is all the different inputs that you can use in your redstone circuit. So now let's take a look at the outputs. The outputs are items that need power to function. The first output is a dispenser. It is created by combining seven cobblestone, a bow, and a redstone dust. When powered, it will fire a projectile forward, so you could use either arrows or fire charges, and this is used for traps, but you could also fill it with other items and use it to dispense them, for example, food. The next output is a note block, created by surrounding a redstone dust with wood. It's not typically used in redstone circuits, but when powered it will emit a sound, so you could use it to make an alarm or a doorbell. The third output is a piston, created by combining iron, redstone dust, free wood and four cobblestone. This can be upgraded to a sticky piston by combining the regular piston with a slime ball. When powered, the piston will extend out and push the block in front of it forward. Then, we'll leave it there when it is unpowered and contracts. The difference with the sticky piston is that it pulls the block back as well. Pistons are immensely useful and can be used to hide doorways, build traps and much more. Next is doors, fence gates and trap doors, created as shown on screen. These are all opened when given a power source and closed when it is taken away. This is particularly useful for the iron door, which can't be opened normally. The redstone lamp is made by combining four redstone dust with a glowstone block. It only produces light when it is powered and is useful for when you only want your lights to operate at certain times. The final output is TNT, created by combining five gunpowder, four sand, and you can probably guess what happens when this is powered. That's all the output, so now you know all sources of power and objects that can be powered, so let's look at how to connect them. Normally you will link the input and the output with redstone dust, placed by right clicking. However this has some flaws, it will only carry the power a distance of 15 blocks, and any trails longer than this won't provide power to the output. However, this can be fixed by adding in a redstone repeater, created by combining three stone, two redstone torches, and a redstone dust. The repeater resets the count to zero, allowing the power to flow for another 15 blocks, so you can create a chain that in theory could go on forever, therefore solving the problem of the 15 range limit. 
Repeaters have other uses as well. When a redstone trail reaches a block, the power will not be able to pass through. However, a repeater will allow it to do so. This can also be used to toggle a redstone torch that is on a block off, which is useful if you want your creation to be powered when the input is at the off position. Finally, when you right click on a repeater, you can add a delay to it. There are four settings, known as ticks, each adding an extra delay. This is useful for getting timings correct in your circuit, and becomes more important in larger scale projects and more advanced builds. So there you go, that is everything you need to know to get started in Redstone. I hope you found this both interesting and helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to get back to you. Um, subscribe if you liked it and maybe check out my other In 10 Minutes video, which is a tutorial on how to get started in Tech It. And you know, like the video, it really helps get it out there. But of course, only do that if you've enjoyed it. So thank you for watching, I've been Stevie, goodbye.